Hello my friend. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I will talk about Cronus in Greek mythology and reveal to you the secret of the myth. The last part is the most important because it gives you an honest interpretation of what is hidden under mythology's surface in all traditions and religions. Mythology doesn't literally mean myths, but they are symbolism of the hidden truths. In other words, mythology is there to represent something of the universal law that governs the universe rather than a mere product of human imagination. Thus, whenever we read any mythology, we need to dig deeper to gain an understanding of the universal symbolism underlying the creation of the universe. In Greek mythology, Cronus is the god of time, the king of titans, and the father of the first generation of Olympian gods. The corresponding Cronus in Roman mythology is Saturn, who is also the god of time, harvest, and generation. Together they represent the origin of our seventh day of the week, which is called Saturday, or Saturn Day, the day of resting, dissolution, and reaping of what has been sowed. The depiction of Cronus is that of an old man leaning on a scythe with an hourglass in his hand. The hourglass symbolizes the concept of time, while the scythe is the instrument that he used to castrate his father Uranus. In Greek mythology, Uranus was the ruler of the universe, the god of the sky, and the god of all gods. As he is so powerful, he feared that one day he will lose his power. Thus, he cast his children who are the twelve titans down to the lower world of Tartarus. Gaia, being Uranus's wife, was very upset about Uranus's behavior. Therefore, she initiated a conspiracy with Cronus and the titans to castrate their father. She created a stone sickle and gave it to Cronus, who eventually castrated Uranus and threw his testicles into the sea. From the blood that spilled out from Uranus and fell upon the earth, the giants, Arrhenius and Melee were produced. Enraged at his defeat, Uranus cursed Cronus to suffer a similar fate, which means that Cronus will also be castrated by one of his children in the future. After the fight with his father, Cronus ruled the Golden Age of the Greeks. He married Rhea, the daughter of Uranus and Gaia. Together, they have three sons named Hades, Poseidon, and Zeus, and three daughters named Hestia, Demeter, and Hera. Now, being very fearful about the prophecy of his father that one day his children will rise up against him, Cronus swallowed each of his children after they were born at the expense of the great sorrow of Rhea. It is important to note here is that the gods do not die inside Cronus's stomach. When it came to Zeus, who was the sixth child, Rhea consulted with her mother Gaia to devise a plan to get retribution on Cronus for his violent acts. They swapped Zeus for a stone called Omphalos wrapped in baby clothes and gave it to Cronus. He ate it in haste without noticing the deception. After that, Rhea was afraid that one day her secret would be revealed. She sent infant Zeus to Mount Ida in Crete, which is the largest Greek island, where Zeus was raised by a sacred goat called Amalthea and a nymph called Melisi. The goat gave him milk and supplied the place of the mother while the nymph fed him with nectar and ambrosia. As a baby would cry loudly when they were young, so the curettes, or the priests of Rhea, had to shout and made loud voices to mask the baby's cries from Cronus and frightened away all intruders. When Zeus grew up to manhood, he is endowed with extraordinary wisdom and is determined to save his brothers and sisters. He then sought help from Metis, who produced a magical potion that made Cronus vomit all his children from his stomach. After freeing his siblings, Zeus released the Hecatonchires, who are the giants with 50 heads and 100 arms, and the Cyclopes, who are also giants, but only have one eye in their foreheads. They forged for Zeus his thunderbolts, for Poseidon a trident, and for Hades a helmet as weapons. Then, they all together waged a war against their father Cronus. This is one of the most important legendary wars in Greek mythology, because it marks the transition of power from Cronus to Zeus. This war is called Titanomachia, in which earthquakes were raised, the sea rose mountains high, and the heavens sent forth lightning and thunder. Eventually, Zeus overthrew his father and banished Cronus's dominion, becoming the ruler of the heaven, who rules as the king of the gods of Mount Olympus. 
The festival for Cronus in ancient Greek religions is called Kronia, which is the first month of the Attic calendar and approximately equivalent to the end of July and the beginning of August. This was the time of harvest when the social restraints were temporarily withheld. People enjoyed freedom from works and slaves were released from their duties to participate in the festival. In the myth of Cronus devouring his children after they were born, we can link this myth to the fact that time has the power to not only give birth to everything, but also devour everything within its existence. That is, we were born in this world out of time, and we will also leave this world through the passage of time. Thus, time is like a loving father who gives birth to his children, but also a cruel father who devours each of his children. Everything in this world is destined to flourish and perish by time. However, the only child that Cronus cannot devour is Zeus, which is the symbol of our souls. According to the Greeks, our souls are immortal who continue to live after the death of the body. That is, what we call death is just the transition from one life to the other, because at the end of one thing is always the beginning of another thing, forming a circle of life and death, birth and rebirth, descending and ascending. However, to the Greeks, the afterlife is much more important than the earthly life, because the earthly life is for the mortals while the afterlife is for the immortals. They believe that it all depends on our deeds on the earthly life that will determine our position in the afterlife. Hence, we have the concept of heaven and hell, which are the real and eternal places of our souls in the hereafter. The moment of our deaths is recorded in many myths, traditions, and religions under various names such as the last day, the day of judgment, the day of reckoning, the Ragnarok, the battle of Armageddon, etc. This world does not happen merely by coincidence, my friend. They essentially represent the same thing because we are all here for the same reason and living under the same divine law. Heaven and hell are within us, not without. We are able to gain access to the heaven and hell while we are still living on this earth. In other words, we do not need to physically die to claim back the divinity hidden deep within ourselves. Seek knowledge and wisdom my friend, because they are the weapons that we will take with us after we leave this world, not money, material possessions, and fame. Thank you for listening. I will see you in my next video.